So we're going to continue into the next lab module, our discussion about electrical systems, since it's quite extensive for environmental controls. And I'll just go through a few, I guess, miscellaneous things. One is uh, all of uh, our standard outlets are designed to supply 15 amps to an appliance. And that's the maximum that you can supply. So you can't plug any anything larger than, say, a 1,500-watt heater or a certain kind of a piece of equipment. Um, and that's done to protect the, the circuit from overload. But there are circumstances where we want our branch circuits um, to be supplied with more, uh, to supply appliances with more power. And one of the common applications is in the, um, in the use of air conditioners. So here we have a, a plug for an air conditioner down below. And this is another version, but this is a replacement plug for the same kind of device. And the, the turning of that one pin allows for this circuit to supply 20 amps. Now, when I say allows it, it allows the appliance to draw 20 amps. Um, the appliance is rated to by UL or um, or the Canadian uh, governing um, code body to uh, allow this device to draw 20 amps. So we have a corresponding outlet with this other, um, this twisted, um, shall we say, prong on it. You'll notice, though, that, and you'll see these sometimes, um, you'll notice that it also has the vertical prong. And it's not because a T-shaped thing is fitting in here. It's because it can take either or. It's always, um, it's always allowable to draw less amperage through an outlet than it is to draw more. So this is a way of controlling the amount of current that can be pulled through in standard outlet. And these two you'll typically see in residential and commercial dwellings. This is a nice, I, I, um, I've discussed this idea of branch circuits, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about this idea of three-way switching, turning a light on from uh, two different locations. But this is, um, uh, these illustrations of branch circuits maybe help you to kind of visualize what you would see in the walls of, of a house that's being under or, or commercial building that's being wired. So here we have the supply from the panel box, the wire running up probably across the ceiling to a ceiling box. This would eventually have a lighting fixture attached to it. There is a switch and then it continues on and supplies power to outlets in the room. And this can continue on to other locations, and it can supply other outlets and other lights. And there's very little limits by how many outlets you put on. The, um, because those are considered convenience outlets, they are, um, they are intended to be in places where they're not commonly used. So you may have only a few things plugged in. You may have seven outlets on a wall and only one or two devices plugged into it. So um, any, any, um, overload to this is protected by the circuit breaker at the panel. So if you plug, uh, let's say, two appliances that drew 15 amps, that would be 30 amps, it would automatically trip the circuit breaker over here and you would have to plug into an, an alternate branch circuit. So you can take a few minutes to kind of look at this diagram um, and then be able to think about visualizing that in actual construction. And then the same, the same visualization is given more schematically down below. And here you can see the circuit breaker off of what's called the bus bar supplying power to the circuit. You can see the ground bus over here. It's called the ground bus. And the white wire and the ground wire are connected to the same ground bus. That's because the white wire is called neutral. And between the black wire and the white wire, there is 110 volts. And between the black wire, oops, excuse me, and the ground wire, the copper, wire there's also 110 volts so um, and then you can follow this through and the only um, exception in this whole process is we see this red wire and that red wire is just another wire inside of this conductor so it's a three wire conductor and that's what's controlling the on and off of the light so um, if you're so inclined to be really interested you could study this a little bit and it really explains most of the basic wiring uh, that happens in a residential dwelling. I put this in um, because there's some issues that come with switching large commercial buildings, where light switches are, how many lights they control. 
Um, I worked in many retail outlets where you turn the lights on in the building by flipping circuit breakers and using them as switches. And I've read that that's relatively um, um, not recommended. I wanted to just take a minute to explain this concept of three-way switching. There's three-way switching, four-way switching, but com it's not uncommon in a room to have a, a way into the room, a way out of the room, or two doors on it. And you would want to turn the room lights on from both locations. And in order to do that, um, uh, we use what's called a three-way switch. And that the idea here is that no matter which way at either position that the switch is in, it can always supply power by grabbing the other pole. So you can always complete a circuit no matter which way the switch is turned. So if you turn the light off on this side, you can turn the light back on on this side. And that's the wiring for a three-way switch that allows you that kind of control. Now, um, I'll, I'll put an end to that um, part of the discussion, and we'll pick up on the residential code for electrical wiring next.